My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Well, I want to get back into the study of 1 Corinthians 15. Hope you enjoyed uh, the references there to Josephus. Appreciate all of the comments uh, in sharing with you that historical testimony about the incredible, absolutely incredible events that occurred during the siege of Jerusalem. And, and oh, by the way, I cited Josephus. But the Roman historian Tacitus reported the same thing, okay? Uh, So it's it's really quite remarkable. Well, anyway, we're looking at, we're studying the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 through the eyes and through the perspective of the new heaven and the new earth, the new Jerusalem, the new creation, in other words. I've shared with you that virtually no one denies that the resurrection takes place. Then we have the new creation. Now, here's what that means. When we find references to the new creation, we are thereby seeing implicitly references to the resurrection. I am absolutely stunned when I read comments by someone who are most generally attempting to avoid the power of covenant eschatology, and uh, a passage has been given, okay, and the objector, a former preterist, says, well, I don't see the words AD 70 there. I don't see these words. I don't see those words. Uh, That is such a foolish, false, horrible hermeneutic. I've commented on this over and over and over again, how anyone could claim to be serious and a scholar and to say, well, you know, text A, text B, text C. Okay, uh, text B and C uh, contain given words. Text A doesn't use those same exact precise words. Therefore, it's not talking about the same as text B and C. That is such a simplistic horrible hermeneutic. And yet, once again, I see it being employed. And those same people, those very same people, they run to 1 Corinthians 15, and they say, oh, this is talking about physical bodily resurrection. And guess what? The term physical body is not in Corinthians or any other New Testament or Old Testament text. It It's just a horrible hermeneutic. Okay, get off my soapbox there. Uh, I just, like I said, it's just disturbing when you have people who claim to be serious Bible students appealing to such a horrific hermeneutic. Now, Isaiah 66 is a prediction of the new heaven and the new earth. It is, therefore, a prediction of the resurrection. Now, I I want to focus this morning on something that segues perfectly into Romans chapter 8, where Paul talks of the then-present sufferings of the Messiah, the birth pangs of creation, which means it's the birth pangs to bring in the new creation. It's the birth pangs, therefore, to bring in resurrection. In Isaiah chapter 66, I'm going to begin reading. Isaiah 66, 7 and following. Before she... Zion. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came, she delivered a male child. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth To her children, shall I, this is Yahweh speaking, shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says the Lord? Shall I, who cause delivery, shut up the womb, says your God? Now look, these are rhetorical questions. And God was saying, when the time of the kingdom, when the time of the new creation, after all, it's the birth of a people. A new people, which is part of the new creation, 
Isaiah 65, 13 and following. Remember that? So here is Yahweh saying, Shall I bring to the time of delivery and not bring forth delivery? The ret- it's, it's rhetorical. God is saying, absolutely not. I will absolutely will not bring to the time of delivery and not bring forth. Well, you know, just the other day, in attempting to do away with the time statements, one person said, well, we know that at hand, quickly, shortly, cannot mean literal, physical, uh, or literal imminence, because after all, if the kingdom would have truly been at hand in the first century then that, and established, that would mean that physical creation would have been reborn, recreated, reconstituted. Folks, you want to talk about an a priori? presuppositional theology that has no merit, by the way. John the baptizer said, repent for the kingdom of heaven has drawn near. Jesus said, the time, and that's the Greek word kairos, means the appointed time is fulfilled. The kingdom of heaven has drawn near. Now, the force of that in the Greek means the time, the appointed time, was at one time not near. But now the countdown of time is fulfilled. The kingdom has drawn near. Now, that, what that means in the light of Isaiah 66 is... Since the, since the discussion is the kingdom and the new creation, the creation of a new people with a new name, the Lord says, will I bring to the time of delivery and not bring forth delivery? And the resounding answer to that is, no, I will not do that. I hope if you're a dispensationalist, you will pay very close attention to what I'm about to say, uh, what I'm about to say. I say it in all kindness. The dispensational paradigm says that Jesus came at just the right time. The Father sent him at just the right time. John said the kingdom was at hand. Jesus said the kingdom was at hand. The time had come. And yet we are told, numerous people told me over the last two or three weeks, that Jesus came to establish the kingdom, but due to the Jewish unbelief, he could not establish the kingdom. That means that God brought to the time of delivery and yet could not bring forth the new creation, could not bring forth the kingdom. Folks, God said, I'm not going to do that. God was saying, when the time is right, I will not fail. I will not postpone I will not alter my plans. So you have Isaiah 66 predicting the new creation, the coming of the kingdom. You have John and Jesus affirming in the clearest language possible that the time for that had arrived. We must be serious Bible students and honor those inspired statements. I'm going to share with you Something that I hinted at a moment ago. Isaiah 66 takes us directly to Romans chapter 8 and the prediction of the resurrection. The prediction of the redemption of creation. You don't want to miss it. In the meantime, get a copy of my book, One Root, One Kingdom, All Nations. You know, we're we're told, oh, you know, if you don't believe that Israel, old covenant Israel after the flesh remains the chosen people of God, you believe in replacement theology. This is the most extensive, most in-depth refutation of the charge of replacement theology that, as far as I know, it's the most extensive one that's been written. I may have missed some, obviously. But if you want an in-depth discussion of, quote, replacement theology, get a copy of my book, One Root, One Kingdom, All Nations. So we'll see you on the flip side.